Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast, where each episode we showcase exciting new companies from around the world. This podcast is produced by Established, creators of the Startup of the Year program. Established is focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and communication strategies. Thank you to our podcast sponsor, Silicon Valley Bank. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're on episode 11 of the Startup of the Year podcast. It's been a while, but we're back, and we have a lot to share today. I've got my my cast of amazing hosts. Who we got today? We've got Lori Teal, Rich Malloy, and Jen Consalvo joining me on all different areas, all from all different parts of the United States. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, it's been a while, right? Too long. Totally. Too, too long, too long. We're, we took we're a busy, we took heads a, down, getting, yeah. getting startups, uh, meeting, meeting great companies, and getting ready for Summit. Yes, it's been a busy time for us, for sure. And so one of the things we're going to talk about today is our summit coming up. But before we get started, we're going to talk about some Memphis magic that uh, just happened this last week. Um, Jen, do you want to kick it off? We were down in Memphis doing our site visits, and sure. uh, you were hanging out at the Hugh Hotel, right? Yeah. So, uh, so our our uh, director of events, marketing, and I went down there just to do some some you know final things with our venues and making sure everything's ready for October. And uh, and Hugh Hotel is this really cute little boutique hotel that we um, that we're going to be hosting a rooftop party on. And they were all kinds of VIPs there for a big event, and we just happened to bump into. Mr. Justin Timberlake, while we were there, wow, and, uh, and he was kind enough to take a picture with us, and you know, it's just he, he's from the area, and it was just a little of that Memphis magic that we so not jealous, to, uh, so not jealous, so, so not, not jealous. jealous. <laughs> we, we, hope to, we we hope to sprinkle <laughs> that Memphis magic all over our startup summit. <laughs> right, but that's that. What was it that tipped you off, though? That wasn't what tipped you off. It was something else. Oh yeah. So I saw this guy. He was getting into an elevator, and I recognized the back of his T-shirt, and it said "Made in America," and it, his shirt said "Crew." This, and I, this is America. Yeah, yeah, this is America. And I, I asked a woman who was showing us around. I'm like, "Is that is that the crew for Childish Gambino?" <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yes, it is. And, I, and so I was totally keeping my eyes open for Childish Gambino and texting Frank because I know I know what a huge fan he is. And I never got to see him. I know he was there, um, but yes. I never got to see him. But we got to see Justin Timberlake, and that's pretty cool, too. Because you were standing right next to him. He, literally, I turned around, and he was standing, <laughs> like, maybe five or six feet away from me. And we were just, you know, we're just all hanging out. It's nice. Nice. Cool. A little Memphis magic for you. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So not jealous. So we'll be, so not jealous. We'll be there in like 40-something <laughs> days. Yeah, right. And uh, we'll be bringing a bunch of stars. But today's show is not all about the summit. Today's show is all about um, the movement, the the health movement. There's a, there's a movement happening nationally and globally to preserve our health. I mean, who wouldn't want to live to 150? Um, I think they used to do that too, actually, back in the day in like Tibet or some other areas. I've, it's been some really um, not fully – articulated stories about it, but, um, you can find them around. So, um, that people are used to live longer and now yes. we've kind of sh- shrunk it down and now we're trying to live longer again. And so you're seeing a lot more biohacking and a lot more startups focused on health and wellness, um, hundreds of them. Um, so, so many, and, um, we've seen a ton come through our startup of the year program. Um, last year's winner happened to be, um, a periomics, which is, um, in, in that space as well and really revolutionizing the way that uh, medical professionals around the world identify um, infections. And uh, we're going to talk about her in a little bit, but, um, you know, or about the periomics and, and, and Crystal uh, Eisenhower in a little bit. But uh, in the meantime, um, we're going to be talking about some startups today that are in that same space. So each one of us uh, is going to dive into, we've got four companies today and they're from all the different parts of the United States. Um, and we're going to jump in and talk about those companies. So, does anybody want to add anything about the health and wellness? I know Jen and I have kind of got that health and wellness bug. You know, I just want to add in that this is so crucial now because for the first time in a long time, um, our our length of life in the United States has gone down instead of up. Um, so the the life expected life span of adults is actually going in the wrong direction. So wow. um, so I had no I, idea. yeah okay. yeah it's it's a big deal, and um, especially when we're supposed to have the best health care in the world. So the idea that um, you know that we're we're having more and more chronic illnesses, we're not managing our stress, 
there are so many things that we can do to help ourselves. Um, and so it's exciting to see all these, these companies working on it. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to each individual, right? We have to, we have to choose to do these things. We have to take control of our healthcare. So if I, if I could share one message with everyone, I think that would be. <laughs> That's so what it would be. Minute, Jen, my, so my health insurance costs, you know, that are going up by 10% each year. That doesn't mean I'm getting 10% healthier. <laughs> it should mean that, right? <laughs> Hear that, all healthcare companies? Um, I expect yep. more health this year because my premiums went right. up again. <laughs> yep. yeah. Way up again. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, that's not necessarily the case, guys. Sorry. Um, but it's a, good, it's a good topic for fodder, and we can <laughs> talk more about it later. Uh, today, we're going to talk about startups, though, that are attacking this space in different ways. And the first company uh, that we're going to look at is a company called Jesse. Uh, it's not a person. It's actually a company. And uh, Jen, did you want to just dive in and talk a little bit more about Jesse and what they're up to out of uh, New Orleans? Absolutely. So actually, we first uh, saw one of the founders of this company speaking on stage at NO in New Orleans a few months ago, where we hosted one of our Startup of the Year events. And, and I was really excited to learn about it. So Jesse is an on-demand digital clinic for women that streamlines access to leading virtual care services um, with personalized navigation and support. So this platform works as a health concierge, answers questions about where to find general health, nutrition, um, sexual reproductive health information and services. Um, the user can actually schedule video chats with doctors. They can order at-home lab tests. They can get connected to the right providers in their area. So it's kind of this, you know, as it mentioned, it's this virtual concierge that helps you with all aspects. Um, and areas of care include chronic care that we just talked about. We have um, a lot of need in this country to help people with chronic illnesses, behavioral health, acute care, dermatology, and women's wellness. Um, the platform itself targets large self-insured employers who are focused on reducing the costs of healthcare, which is super important. And, um, and basically the company operates on a SaaS revenue model. So, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about this company. The founders are two women, Amy, I don't know how to say their last names, Amy Domenge and Karana Williamson, I think. Yeah. That's how they say their yeah, names. Yeah, that's a good job. Um, well, thank you. And yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're really exciting. And I think... I heard know, a little bark in there too. That was Wolfie. I heard he was <laughs> trying to get his word in uh, yeah. there for a second. Yep. They, uh, they came out of Cedar sinai Techstars Accelerator Program a couple of years ago, and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're addressing something that's really, really important. So 90% of the most popular health care plans charge women more than men on an individual basis. Um, wow. 18% of, of insured women forego care because of the costs. Like this is really important for, um, you know, to target this audience and make sure that women are taking care of their health needs. So it's a really exciting company. Yeah, that's really um, interesting about the the numbers too. What you just mentioned about the costs. Yeah. Um, similar similar situation in clothing too. Right, dry cleaning. <laughs> it's dry cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> it costs so much more for women's women's clothes. Basically, right. anything. Just just put it out there in the world that you know. Just put women's name on it, and it costs more. So again, that's yeah. why this this type of service is so important, so women can feel like they have someone to go to um, for their health needs. Great. Awesome. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay. Um, next up, Rich, you want to give us a little bit of an update on – which one did you just pick? I'm sorry. Flow not, flow, uh, Phylomics. 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 Yes. yes. And uh, they're out of – where are they out of? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., the capital yeah. city. Yep, right, absolutely. Take it away. Take it away. So Phylomics uses a routine blood draw to detect multiple types of cancers uh, before symptoms appear. And uh, so this eliminates the need for redundant lab work, but also the, the idea that you can go and do this on a proactive basis and monitor progress and, and track markers, cancer markers over time uh, is, uh, you know, I think is a direction that medicine really should be moving because of, we, because of all the access to, uh, to data and records that, that we have. Uh, on, a, on a personal level, this is super interesting to me because um, I... Um, 
because uh, I'm a cancer survivor myself. And so I had testicular cancer right after I graduated college. And, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I survived. Uh, but, you know, as, as kind of an, um, I don't know, like, you know, a long-term effect of that is, is that every now and then I get sick and something happens or I've got headaches and I'm like, oh my God, it's cancer. And right. have, like, have these freak out moments and then go and get checked out and everything's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the idea that I could go and have go through their simple process and have screening done on a regular basis as frequent or as infrequent as I wanted, but at least do it once a year, I think would be, would be a minimum, at least for somebody yeah. in my situation to go and get blood drawn. And it's, it's a super simple process. And to have that information and then to be able to track that data over time, the old lines, not dots, right? Is you just, just one data point is not as helpful as having multiple data points. So right. the process is you get 10 milliliters of blood drawn and they analyze that. It only takes them 12 minutes to analyze that, uh, that data. And then their algorithm breaks down the dimensionality of the data and provides actionable clinical insights. And so the company was founded, uh, they had the idea in 2004, and they did their first human study in 2007. In 2014, they got their first patent, and they had drafted additional IP uh, patents. And they've raised uh, $60,000 in, they've raised $60,000 in 2017 to get started as a, uh, as a finalist at the Princeton Tiger Launch uh, product, uh, um, uh, Princeton Tiger Launch uh, competition. Mm -hmm. um, and as of now, they've tested over 500 patients across several cancers, breast cancer, lung, pancreatic, ovarian, prostate, um, and more. Um, and they have that one patent. Uh, they actually have two, they have one patent issued and two provisional patents in place. So a smart team that's out there and they're, they're doing great work and I'm excited about, I'm excited for when they launch their product because I will definitely sign up and take a look at it. No, I love what they're doing. I think, um, it's really cool, especially from, with your perspective. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, for you know anybody that has cancer or, or had has has had cancer before, I think it's. I mean, when was the last? Like, what was the the frequency of of those types of tests that you got prior to um, seeing something like this? Or what what has been the frequency in general? I guess since since you had that issue, I go and you know I used to get I used to get a uh, a, C, uh, a CAT scan a CT scan um, immediately for the first five years after it was once a year and mm -hmm. then it's gone down to maybe once every three years or, or right. whatever and now it's it's to a point where I don't really go to get CT scans on a regular basis. Um, one of the challenges is that I have actually high theta alpha protein levels in my blood as a result of the having had the cancer, which is one of the tumor markers, but. But it's just again, this is the where having that having access to the long history of data right. is important because right. you just know that Rich has theta alpha protein levels that are at this level instead of that level. And you don't have to get a CAT scan every time. Right, like that's that's a big yeah. deal. That's a difference. Yeah. And um, having the more data obviously could be really helpful, you know, yep. along the yep. way. So that's great. Um, I think it's really definitely a game changer, and um, in some, in uh, as far as I was just going to say, I used to work for a nonprofit that helped. Uh, folks facing life battling illnesses and a lot of folks just don't know until it's too late so i just think this is going to be a game changer and um be proactive yeah. to help a lot of people right yeah and this is something peter diamandis uh is actually working on with uh he's got a he's got a project called the um the human longevity institute right and one of his one of their fundamental beliefs is that you should you should know what's going on with your body and you should get blood draws on a regular basis like every six months or every three months or even monthly if you wanted to so that you so that you have – so you see how these things are progressing and when something pops up off the charts, you catch it super early. But right. why not? Why not be proactive with right. – with, you're proactive with so many other things with you know, in, in your lives. Why not be proactive with your health? Well, the reason is is because the health insurance is in – you know, it doesn't make it possible to do that. Uh, you've got to, you have to really be your own advocate, but if you could have a private service that does this and they do it in an inexpensive way and that you, heck, if I, you may even be able, may even be able to use HSA dollars for it, that, that would be amazing. Then we can all have that proactive look. The future yeah, we, is personalized medicine. 100%. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And, and proactive too, right? We have no, like, I have no markers, like based off what we just talked about, I have no markers for this. Like Jen, do you have any markers for like anything related to, to, Not um, yet. Right, exactly. Not yet. So, <laughs> right, right, exactly. So I'm, I'm excited about this company because I think I'd be a customer and, just, and so to, just to find it. out. Yeah, so right, many like yeah. it that are doing this across the board in different different yeah. um, different areas. Yeah. And I really don't know cool. about your city, but Santa Barbara actually has mobile uh, phlebotomists, so they'll come to your house and do a blood draw. 
which wow. would have been easier. So they should yeah. it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Very cool. All right. Um, so on that note, we're going to move on to our, our next. Uh, we actually have a special guest so today. We've got um, our startup of the year from 2018. Um, you've, uh, we've got Crystal Eisenhower from um, Periomics, who just closed her her first or Series A. So uh, Periomics has been around for a little bit. It launched out of George Washington University in uh, 2014, and um, you know turned into a full time company and has had you know tons of support and success through through that time through um, raising government you know they've got government grants I think they raised like 1.8 million dollars in government grants and they've taken a half million dollars or more in um, seed funding from a bunch of angels um, but at the end of the day um, you know this they need to get continue to grow and keep going and um, and so this this 1.8 million of series A is going to help them get to that point Um Right now, they're at about 1.3 in um, revenue last year, 1.3 million in revenue, and they're looking to double that this year, and then ultimately generate 25 million in revenue uh, in the next three years. So, we're going to talk to uh, Crystal here in a second, and she'll share more about her next steps with the funding. We're super excited for. Super excited to have you join us today, Crystal. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Before we get started, I want to just give you a chance to give everyone kind of a quick, you know. 10 to 15 second overview about what a periomics is so that everyone's caught up to speed and then we can kind of dive in deeper. Sure. A periomics mission is to advance healthcare through better infection testing. And the reason why this is important is because there are millions upon millions of people that are living with chronic infections and this is having a profound, profoundly negative impact on their quality of life. These patients are being told there's nothing wrong with them. They're being told they have a psychological condition. They're being told they have an autoimmune condition. And in many of these cases, none of those answers are correct. We are increasingly seeing the links between infection and the microorganisms in our body and chronic conditions that we've never before connected to infection. So we provide a service that identifies every known bacteria, virus, parasite, and fungus from clinical samples. And the purpose of that is to give the healthcare providers the best possible information so that they can give uh, better patient care, so that we have better patient outcomes when they have the complete information. Fascinating. So you're saying there's people out there, they're sick, they can't figure out what's wrong with them. Doctors are, are, are puzzled as well. And this test that you're offering or these tests you're offering will allow them to help diagnose these patients. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Wow. Um, and so how did this product get started? When you were just noodling one day on how to help save a bunch of people's lives and decided to come up with this? Or what? what's the kind of origin story of a periomics? So we were co-founded from research out of George Washington University. And we uh, had this idea uh, to be able to identify every, every microorganism in a sample. And that was a very powerful idea. No one had really tried to do this before. So uh, my co-founders at George Washington University and Boston University, they, um, they were looking for a way to, to get this idea into, into the clinical market. And so they recruited me in as their founding CEO. And my job was to take this academic project and be able to uh, give it a, a real market and a real clinical application. Gotcha. That makes sense. Very cool. Um, and so now you've been at it for a few years now. That was, you said 2014, right? So, yeah. and just four years later, you, you won the startup of the year. How is the product and company evolving? It has changed dramatically. When we first started looking at the, at, at this technology, we thought we would go into animal markets first because the regulatory requirements are much less onerous in the, in the animal markets. So, that was kind of the first idea. And what we realized is that the, the price of the technology is just too high for those markets. Those markets just can't bear the cost of this. And so we started turning towards the clinical market. Um, that's really the market where the most urgent need is for what we do. Again, there are people living all over the world that are sick and no one can figure out why. And this, this technology is able to help solve those cases in, in many instances. 
Very interesting. Interesting. So you're saying that folks didn't want to necessarily, or people wouldn't want to shoulder the burden of doing this for their sick horse or cat or dog because of the cost of doing it. Is that what you're saying? And so you jumped back into um, humans. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Um, tell us a little bit more about your traction and, and what's been working for you uh, as you're looking to find new customers. The first two years, we were focused on educating patients who were sick and no one could figure out why. And that was a very successful campaign. We spent a lot of time on social media, educating patients really one at a time. And that was great because we then had this broad base of patients that were taking our test into their doctor's office and asking their doctor to order the test for them. Right now, we're shifting into more of a healthcare focus. So we just launched our first external sales team. We have seven salespeople in the field all over the United States, and their job is to go into doctor's offices and educate the doctors about our technology and how this can help in especially those cases where they have patients who have been sick for decades and they just can't figure out what's going on. So we're shifting from, you know, a direct to consumer approach to a direct to healthcare provider approach. And then as we mature, we are um, going to be further shifting to um, the payers. So who's paying for this? Eventually, we want insurance to pay for this. So we need to begin educating insurance providers on the value of what we're doing. Instead of someone suffering with a chronic, debilitating urinary tract infection for 20 years, mm. right. let's get them the right information so we can treat that instead of having this patient in the revolving door of healthcare and spending tremendous amounts of healthcare resources and dollars. Amen. Jeez. I mean, I'm surprised they don't want to pick that up right now to kind of help these these patients. That's just crazy, it seems like. They're starting to. So we, we do have yeah. some coverage on an out-of-network basis, um, but getting into the insurance system is very complicated, and it's a very long gotcha. process. So okay. just today, we had our representative from um, Capitol Hill here learning about our technology, so, um, Representative Wexton. And she was wanting to know how she could help. And one of the things that we need help is getting an audience with, you know, the Medicare and the Medicaid groups to help educate them on what we're doing and how this can dramatically improve the outcome of patients and dramatically improve the the healthcare spend. You know, this is one of those rare cases where everyone can actually win. The patient right. can finally get better. The doctor can finally help this patient get better. And the insurance company stands to save tremendous amounts of money on these really chronic cases. And the beauty of it all is that no one had to compromise on the quality of health care. Right. No, that's great. And that whole global insurance tech kind of arena is, is, um, a growing area as well. And, um, you think this could almost, there's probably something that can, can kind of play into that with what you're doing. So, um, very interesting there. And then in general, like, um, first off, I want to congratulate, congratulate you on the, the success so far and the traction. And, um, you just raised your series a congratulations. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you. It took, you know, and, uh, I know you've taken some other grants and things before that. So it's not the first, um, money that you've, you know, uh, taken as investments and whatnot, but, um, you know, 1.8 million series a, you had some great investors involved. We were excited to be a, a part of that. Um, can you tell us a little bit more like what it was like to raise that funding and, and any, you know, hurdles that you may have crossed Ooh. as you were fundraising? <laughs> it was hard. Yeah. Uh, I joke because I, I tend to choose activities in my life that are incredibly hard. And this was mm -hmm. right in that vein. Raising money is hard no matter what kind of a company you have. And unfortunately, we had a series of bad actors that had a lot of publicity and <laughs> made our... We we're we're going to talk yeah. about that soon. So you want to just hit, hit the nail on the head now while we're, yeah. while we're there? Um, the one you're talking about is Theranos, right? And, yes. and, and that, that whole situation even has a movie. So yes. um, and how, how did that affect things, I guess, is the question. I lost millions of dollars in investment money because of that. Right in the middle of my funding round, we had the documentaries coming out on TV and the, you know, ABC 2020 report. 
all of those things hit right in the middle of our funding round. And I literally lost millions of dollars in investors because they got really scared and they wanted to know, how are you not the same as this? How are you, how are you different than this? And, you know, especially when you're dealing with angel investors, these are individuals who are investing their own personal dollars into your company. And those relationships are very complex. And these, these investors, you know, it just takes one, one small misstep to, you know, have, have the whole decision come crumbling down. So it, it cost us a lot of investment and that's unfortunate However, that's making us stronger. Having had to push through all of that negative press and all of those comparisons that everybody wanted to make has made us stronger. Yeah. And can you just address how are you different? Because I think that's the thing that it should put people at ease as opposed to, you know, being fear, you know, fearful of, of what um, what was done prior when with a company in person that not, didn't necessarily um, fulfill what they said they would do. Sure. And there's countless ways that we are different. Um, a few of the most important ones are, um, for starters, I am highly credentialed. I've trained at you know, the University of Cincinnati Medical Center to get my doctorate work. I've trained at Mayo Clinic. I've trained at Duke University in infectious diseases. Uh, my second, this is my second company, not my first, my second company. I have, you know, connections and references and credentials in the business world. I've, I've done this before. Our technology is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. It's heavily published. It's heavily cited in the academic world. And last but not least, we've been using our actual technology to get answers for patients and doctors for over two and a half years. So we have substantial market traction and we've, we've generated significant sales revenues doing exactly what we promised to do. Right. So there's no, there's no secret there. No. <laughs> it's out there no. of what you're doing and you're very transparent about yeah. it. So, and even the revenues, I, I even think I saw an article with some of your revenues stated in there, which is, you know, fantastic. So, um, other than the fact that there's, um, you know, similar kind of, uh, promises, it seems like you're delivering what they're, what you're saying you're going to do. And that's obviously not what Theranos did. So that should be, I mean, that should eventually kind of wash its, wash itself out. It I think, will. um, yeah, it's just going to take time. And I feel terrible. You had such a tough time with the fundraise because of that, the timing and everything, um, matters. Yes. No, the timing absolutely matters. And, um, but again, we, we pushed through it. We raised enough yep. money to get us through to the next stage. Theoretically yep. on the, the sales revenue traction we have right now, Theoretically, we don't have to raise additional capital. We we can become cash flow positive and profitable with the capital we've raised to date. Excellent, that's great. Um, that's what uh, the next round of investors, if you need them, will want to hear. So that's yeah. awesome. So congratulations there too. Um, so aside from fundraising, what were some of the toughest challenges? thus far? Have you had anything else that's been a hurdle that you're like, oh, geez, I would love to warn any startup out there about this one? Oh, people. People, people, people. (laughs) Yeah. It is very hard to find the right people to build a company, any type of a company. But when you're building a company that is in a highly visible, regulated world that's dealing with patient outcomes, it's even harder. So the people side of things has been... I think the second biggest challenge that we've faced. Fortunately, we've we've gotten to a great homeostasis with a with our team. We have some amazing people, and everyone here is is one hundred percent committed to our mission. And our mission is to advance healthcare through better infection testing to advance world health. I love that. That's great. Um, so. Aside from that, um, what other in, uh, what other innovations are you excited about in the area of personal health? We're, this whole episode is about um, health and wellness, and we we looked at you know we're, we're looking at four different companies that are early stage startups in the space, and want to just get your take on um, what things are exciting you. The biggest thing right now that's exciting us is this whole 
world of the human microbiome. The human body is six pounds of microorganisms, and we need these micro these microbes. They help us digest our food. They help protect us from pathogens. They help synthesize vitamins. They do all kinds of amazing things for us. And so in some respects, we're not really individual people or beings. We are these super beings full of all of these other creatures that um, works together in a, in a single unit. What we're learning is that the, the, the microbes, especially in our intestinal tract, can have profound impacts on our health and well-being. We are seeing new, new studies published every week supporting the role of the bacteria in our guts to everything from obesity to diabetes to autism to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, it, the depression, schizophrenia, the list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And so we are in an incredibly exciting time in science where we're now starting to understand the, the, the complete picture of how our bodies really work in conjunction with all these microbes. And once we understand how they work, then we can, we can modulate those microbes. We can we can you know, change the composition of our microbiome to support a more healthy, functioning um, neurological situation. There are cases where autistic children have reverted to more healthy um, individuals after getting a fecal microbiota transplant, which means they took the fecal material from a healthy individual and implanted it into the autistic child. And the, the, the effects were, were long lasting over two years. So this is, yeah, you know, I think I saw that report and it's fascinating to see that, that so much of this is related to gut health and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how much, um, we just didn't know before public, like mainstream, right? Like mainstream, this is becoming a mainstream thing as I sip my kombucha right now (laughs) talking to you. I'm not even kidding. Like it's become such, I mean, back in the day, what were we drinking? We were drinking probably some soda of some sort, you know, like not really doing much for our gut health and thinking about that even. And so now it's, it's really come around in the last 20 years. Um, crazy amount of people are talking about it and, um, we are at a new, a new kind of era of, of taking care of ourselves. Yes. Yes, and so these these discoveries these these are directly connected to what we do every day, and these discoveries will improve the human condition, and we are excited and honored to be on the bleeding edge of this of this technology. Yeah, definitely, um, and so we're excited too. And I think I think this this episode we've got some other folks doing some interesting things um, in similar uh, spaces, so it uh, fits right into that conversation. Um, just to kind of wrap things up, because we, we don't want to take too much more of your time. You've got a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Um, what, um, if you can kind of look back at, um, the last year since, um, doing start of the year, can you kind of, kind of share, like, what were kind of the highlights of your experience as a start of the year company as, and the winner? It was a really interesting experience. You know, I think a lot of us that, that run startups, we do these competitions where you go and you, you, you pitch and, you know, some people win and some people don't win. And, you know, I, typically we hadn't and I hadn't been, you know, high on the list of, of, of winners of those types of events because what we do is so complicated and it's, it's kind of hard to get your head around it. Um, but going through those those pitches in those competitions helped me refine the story and really start to be able to tell it in a a more a more succinct way. The startup of the year experience was really interesting because I was there to network. I had no indications that or inklings that we were going to win. I wanted to get the visibility and, and be able to present what we were doing to a broader audience. And then I remember when they announced the, the top 15, I was like, oh, cool. We're in the top 15. That's awesome. And so I tweeted it. And then they announced the top five. And I, and I thought, wow, well, that's, that's really cool. We're in the top five. Awesome. So we're going to get to present. And then I looked down and realized I'm wearing a black turtleneck. And 
for those of you who follow the Theranos story, um, understand why that might not be the best wardrobe choice for that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. That was, yeah. Um, cause normally, Funny. yeah. Yeah. So normally I, one of my, my smart aleck quips is I, I don't wear black turtlenecks. So that that's one big differentiator between, between <laughs> them and us. But that day I could not say that. So, um, and then winning, um, you know, that was a platform for us to connect with investors. I have about $400,000 in investment dollars that came as a direct result of participation in and winning the startup of the year. Awesome. That's great to hear. So that's been great. And not just investment dollars, but some of the investors that came through with that, they have been very proactive in connecting us with new opportunities. So I had the chance to present at the French embassy through that. Um, oh, we're wow. going to be um, pre- uh, attending the and um, presenting at the, the uh, CTA. Is it CTA or CES? I always get them confused. C- CTA. Uh, well, CES <laughs> is the big, yes. big event in Las Vegas, yeah, so, but it's CTA that produces yeah, it. Yeah. So we have the opportunity to do that um, as part of oh, the startup of the year um, event. We oui, we. Oui. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So it's it, it it's a great group and a lot of really powerful connections that mm-hmm. I wouldn't have had otherwise. So it was it was really a, a really great opportunity for us. Well, we're super excited to have you as our Startup of the Year and really appreciate everything you're doing to make the world a better place. So thank you so much for, for participating and coming out and doing what you're doing. And um, we want to continue to support you in any way we can. So thank you so much even for joining us today. I know you're, you're super welcome. busy. You had um, folks folks in your office from, from Congress and whatnot as you try to push things ahead. So we appreciate you working, your, working us in today. No so thank you so all. much. It's a pleasure. So that was really great. Really interesting to hear from Crystal. I'm glad to have her on the show. Uh, really excited about what she's doing. We did invest in that that round, uh, the this, this Series A round, um, which we're excited about and supporting her And as a startup of the year from last year. Um, she should be down in, in Memphis, too. We're working through that those details right now. So um, it's, uh, it's great to have her in a company that's doing something really interesting uh, in the health tech space on our health tech episode. Let's hear a word about our sponsor, can you get give it up for Mr. Uh, Rich Malloy? Rich. Absolutely. So today's episode of the Startup of the Year podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley Bank. And you know, the, the team at established, we've been building startup communities for 13 years. And Silicon Valley Bank consistently shows up, adds value, supports startups, and supports their clients. They're more than just bankers. You know, they're mentors, they're advisors, they're super connectors. And we love having the SVB team at our events because they bring a depth of knowledge about startup markets that just doesn't exist from most service providers. And they always treat their founders with respect. And so if you're not banking with Silicon Valley, if you're using, say, a a traditional retail bank like the one on the corner, there's nothing wrong with those banks. But if you're using that, a traditional retail bank, and you plan to raise venture capital, you need to bank with SVB. Your retail banker might not even know what the heck venture capital is, but SVB team does this day in and day out. This is their specialty. They've worked, they've been through the fundraising process with thousands of startups, and they have additional resources to see you through the process and help you succeed. We love SVB, and we're grateful that they're, that they're supporting the, uh, the Startup of the Year podcast. And so visit svb.com slash next to learn more. That's svb.com slash next. So Silicon Valley Bank, ideas bank here. Thank you so much, Rich. Thank you, SVB. We're super excited to be working with you here on the podcast. And we can jump back into our startups. We've got a couple more, and then we'll wrap this up. But uh, Lori, you're next. You've got your uh, Noraflow is the next company we're going to talk about. Lori, do you want to jump in there and talk about uh, Noraflow? Definitely. So Neuroflow is out of Philly, and it is founded by Chris Malaro. He is a West, grad, West Point grad um, graduate and also served in the Army for five years, um, toured in Iraq, um, has quite a resume, and a degree in engineering from Wharton. Um, he, I think out of the experience of coming back from Iraq, he, he quoted that um, coming back, he witnessed firsthand how subjectively in the mental health process too often results in poor quality of life and unnecessary financial costs for veterans and civilians alike, and he wanted to make a change. So he, he has uh, started Neuroflow. And so the way 
They describe it as Neuroflow is a healthcare technology and analytics company enabling behavioral health access and engagement across the continuum of care. So they combine validated techniques, evidence-based protocols, data science, and behavioral economics all together to allow hundreds of clinics and health systems to objectively assess, track, and engage with the patients at all times. So the way it works is the patient and the provider either use the app or the web platform as a communication tool to track progress together. So you imagine you go to the to your provider and you leave the office, especially if it's a, a, a mental health care provider, you leave the office and you kind of, maybe you do some homework in between the next appointment or maybe you don't. Um, there really needs to be pros- progress that happens in between those appointments. So this allows for them to have a continued conversation and to be able to look at um together how the sleep is going, how your mood is going, um, be able to sign activities like maybe do 10 minutes more, more, more of journaling or meditation, exercise, et cetera, so that, again, you're, you're feeling the support and you're keeping the conversation going between the patient and the provider. Um, and as a bonus, he, you um, earn points as you do certain activities that you're assigned that can even um, earn you real uh, rewards, like gift cards, for example, um, at the end of the day. So that's kind of an interesting way, a twist to it as well. Um, they are currently in the market. They have uh, 450, 450 providers in four countries using this. Um, and they've also launched in their first VA facility in 29, or just this year. So um, I think that's, for me, as somebody is uh, talking about a personal experience, um, the wife of a veteran, this is I see it to be a game changer as well because the VA could um, definitely use the support of this, this kind of technology to be able to really help those veterans, um, especially combat veterans coming back that can use that extra support. Um, and they have many other really great accomplishments and wins, and I look forward to mm. seeing them in Memphis and hearing more about them. Really cool. I love that. Anybody else want to share anything? Uh, no, I mean, they, they look like they're really making some impressive traction. Yep. Um, so they're, they're adding like a thousand new patients a month and logging. I like how they call it. They, they've logged 86,000 plus moods. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> um, 6,000 journals. Yeah. Yep. yep. So they're, they're really making some traction. Making today. an impact. Yep. Mm-hmm. Really cool. Excited to meet them in Memphis. Yes. All right. And, uh, next up, moving on, Rich, you got one more today. <laughs> Last but not least, we've got Etta. Etta Epidermis, absolutely. Yep. I had the pleasure of seeing Etta Epidermis at, uh, at Boomtown. Uh, mm-hmm. And so Etta is an artificially intelligent skin cancer detection software. I'm the, I'm the cancer guy today, <laughs> um, bringing, bringing all the cancer detections to you. This is great, right? You're going to help cancer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? This is, right? Yeah. So detect uh, some of the, the internal cancers with phylomics, detect skin cancer with Etta. Uh, yep. It runs predictive models and compares images with a massive melanin diverse diagnostic data set. That is a tongue twister, but I love it. Uh, that sure and, is. <laughs> and then post screening, it tracks the changes of lesions over time. Mm-hmm. And so, the, the, it's so it's so brilliant. It's so simple. It's brilliant, right? You take a picture of what you think may be skin cancer, and yep. you send it off to Etta, and Etta. Um, gets a, a dermatological screening done. You can do it with insurance or you can do it without insurance. Um, with for Etta, it'll cost you ten dollars to have it to have your uh, to get a screening done by a dermatologist. And this is something you can do from anywhere. And so the key here is is that in rural areas where the where the university hospital or the big city hospital is a two hour drive is a full day commitment. Are you going to do that for a spot on your on your on your shoulder or a spot on your your nose? Probably not, and probably not until it's too late. But if you're, but if you wanted to just get this done, this is where telemedicine really, really jumps in. But the other thing is that the other problem is that um, uh, local uh, local physicians, PCPs, and even some dermatologists may have a, dif- a difficult time determining um, what stage. If it is if it is skin cancer, what stage it is, what the risks may be associated with that, or even tracking that change over time. Right, the human mind is great at at forming connections and providing providing analyses, but it's so incredibly subject to memory deficiencies, to biases, to 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 recency bias. Um, 
uh, machine learning, visual, you know, image recognition, machine learning is not subject to these biases. And so by loading in massive data sets and becoming smarter all the time, they're able to recognize, analyze, and then provide feedback and then get, and then get that in front of a licensed dermatologist to get that, uh, uh, to get that whole screening process done for you. So this is where the, the computer's that we are building and the AIs that we, the, the narrow based AIs that we are building can truly augment, uh, the doctors and, and the processes that we have and help people live longer and healthier lives. Uh, the founder Charu, uh, is a machine learning engineer from Chicago. And so her background is in arts and technology and she built the AI engine for ETA. Uh, and she has been out, um, uh, you know, building this, they've run, um, uh, they've been running pilots, uh, with this. And so far the results have, been conclusively positive that this is going to be helpful and accurate. And so really excited to, uh, to have Etta come. I believe they're coming to, uh, to start up the year, aren't they, Lori? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So you get to meet Charu and the Etta team at the summit. All and I'm excited farms. for this one as well. I think, yeah, I'm very excited. To be there. So yep. Etta was at our South by Southwest so, event yep. in Austin. That's right. and, uh, and if you guys remember our, um, our partner over at NASA iTech saw them and encouraged them to apply, and they actually uh, they won a part of the top 25 NASA iTech in this, this last cycle. Nice. So it was exciting to see them on that list. I love the price point. I mean, it's a little bit, it could be a little addictive. You know me, Jen, I'll probably be taking photos of everything. <laughs> I was just going to say, I actually, I would prefer to literally scan my body with this and <laughs> send it to them versus go, go to stand naked in a dermatologist's office and have that whole mo- like body mole check. Mm. <laughs> right. True. But I'm just yeah. thinking like $10 here, $10 there, $10 there, $10, you know, like it's going to be, Yeah. Cha-ching. Yeah, cha-ching. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. For, for us, for us pasty folks, you know, like I, you know, you've got to really be careful with this. You're right. It is the most common. Uh, sorry, I'm feeding into your fears here, cancer or, or <laughs> Frank. Call me cancer. My new nickname. <laughs> yes, my cancer fears. Yes. I'm feeding into your cancer fears, Frank. Yes. Oh man. Yes. <laughs> Be nice. I mean, it's going to be nice to be more accurate because I've been precision, to dermatologists. Precision of language. <laughs> oh, but this is, it is, skin yeah. cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer. Uh, yeah. However, um, it is the easiest to cure if caught and treated early. And mm-hmm. uh, my, my, you know, I have plenty of family members that have had, have had been treated for, for skin cancer. And it's so minor. It's so minor. But if you let yeah. it go, it, it's, it's not. Right. And did, did, what, I, I may have missed this when you were talking. What's the next step then once they get that scan or whatever, do they then send you to the local like dermatologist or something like that? Like if, they, if it comes back as like, oh, this, you should check that out? Or what, yeah, what was that's it? just having that just having that so, of saying you need to go and this yeah. this is probably cancer. You need to go and get this checked out. Got that it. is that's more that that is more than you would get um, from any from just by simply not going right because the alternative right. of what most people are doing is just not going right yeah that's true that's a great point or you go and the dermatologist will just burn it to burn it because you're worried about it and, it, and you're there and maybe, they, and maybe you didn't <laughs> yeah. need to do that because that's happening right. that's happening yeah. too. yeah it's like the time I'm a at the hospital person, so. right 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 you go to you go to the hospital for like a stomach pain and they take your appendix right like yeah. that kind of thing <laughs> can happen because they don't want to let you go. Because then, what are they going to say? Well, I didn't take it, and now he's got problems. So, anyway, allegedly, I get it. They so, don't do that. Allegedly, allegedly, they, allegedly they do that. <laughs> that could happen. We've known people um, to do that. Anyway, that's really interesting. I think it's really. I mean, the model there is really interesting. It cuts down on the cost too for having to go through regular doctors. Um, like has that pre-screening. So excited about them. Uh, what else are we excited about, gang? We are excited about our summit coming up, yep, and. Yep. It's not too far away uh, as far as time. It isn't that far away for some people if they live in close to Memphis. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast later, sorry. Sorry, you missed it. But there's always another train coming. Um, <laughs> they, they come on time at, around the October time frame. So our summit uh, though this year, uh, we've got uh, it down in Memphis, Tennessee. And there's like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, there's there's – it's gonna be Memphis, Memphis magic down there. We know that, right? So we just gotta, we've gotta, um, just gotta show up and, and be a part of it. And we've got a number of companies right now. Lori, how many companies are headed down there as of now? 
We have 75 that we've revealed on the Summit site as we build mm-hmm. towards our top 100. So each week we reveal 15 new startups and give lots of shout outs during the week to get them to shine a light on, on what's going on and who's coming. And we're excited mm-hmm. as we're nearing the full top 100 startups for Memphis. And we've got some great people coming down there too. So both on the corporate um, side, uh, we really want to make sure that people meet folks that are working at large brands or organizations to connect with them, as well as on the uh, venture side. And we've got a number of VCs and investors. Um, We've got um, just a great group of people. Anybody want to rattle off some people that are going to be there just to kind of help spread the word a little bit? Sure. From an organization standpoint, uh, I mentioned NASA iTech before. They're going to be there. Twilio. Some of you may be familiar with Twilio. Um, I've heard of it. it. Uh, Bunker Labs, uh, Keurig. Mm-hmm. The Jump Fund, Service Master, Indiegogo, Mucker Capital, uh, Next Gen Angels, or sorry, Next Gen Venture Partners. Um, there's a whole host of other funds. Phil, Phil Nadell in. came out came out too, right? He's coming out. He's he's he runs the fund that uh, the Shark, uh, Barbara Cochran's fund, right? So Forefront, Forefront Ventures. Ventures will be there as well as a judge. Fred Mosler, who is the right hand to um, Tony Shea and the Zappos crew there so zappos.com he's now got his own investments and companies uh, that he runs he'll be there as a, as a finals judge uh erica minahan um she's going to be out there as well she's um, got a couple different um irons in the fire as far on the venture side um and then um we've got whirly he goes by whirly right that's it yes Okay, well, he's the infamous Whirly. Uh, he William will be there. Hurley, but William Google Hurley. Google, yeah, Google Whirly. You'll, you'll learn more about him. Um, he'll be coming as well. And then um, we're still securing a lot of judges to judge the companies and be a part, be mentors, and do matchmaking. And it should be a great group of people down in Memphis, um, which has got a, a small town feel, right? Even though it's a big name city. Or how would you put it, Jen? It does, well, it's, well, it's a music city. Yeah. It's um, it's it's got a lot of life. It's some people I've heard it compared to Austin. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a really fun, energetic city right mm-hmm. on a river, which happens to be home to a lot of big companies. Um, and we're really really excited because at our event we're going to be taking over AutoZone Park, the home of the Memphis Redbirds. So literally, we are taking over the entire ballpark, and uh, and we'll be hosting a lot of our events there. Uh, we'll also be bringing people over to the Peabody Hotel. So it's, uh, I believe it's one of the places listed in like, what's that book, Frank? The, like 500 places to see before thousand you places die. To see before, yeah, and we did. We saw it. We, uh, they have, we drove, when we drove across the country and we were moving to Las Vegas a while back, we drove there and stopped there to see the ducks. They have little ducks that live in the lobby and then go up to their penthouse suite every night. So that's kind on of. On the rooftop. And on, we will be. On the rooftop with the our, ducks. We'll be hosting our top five finals this year um, from the Peabody Hotel rooftop. And uh, it's, it's going to have quite a view and, and be an exciting yep. night. Yes, and the Memphis Redbirds are the Triple A affiliate for the St. Louis Cardinals, so they're it's, it's a nice ballpark, and it will be a great place and backdrop for a lot of our festivities. Um, and again, you mentioned the the Who Hotel, which um, the Who Hotel, sorry, the so that's Hugh our hotel. our welcome party will also be on their rooftop, and maybe we'll bump into a few VIPs while Mate, we're there. We already I'm have. Just saying Justin Timberlake <laughs> also played the BB King Club that night, so or another night. Oh. So I'm just saying. Oh, nice. <laughs> Justin, if, if you're listening, just come join us. Please. Come join us. You can be, we'll make you a judge for sure. Um, and then the, the prize, obviously, for the startups is um, $100,000 investment for the top company. Um, we're also working on our own uh, investment mechanisms as well, and as well as, you know, we've all, like, We've got Springtime Ventures, which uh, Rich is a part of. We're, Jen and I are part of Next Gen Ventures, as well as LPs, um, not to mention a lot of the connections. So we want to really make it useful and helpful for the companies that are out there, a lot of which are raising, a lot of coming through our daily deal flow newsletter, which if you aren't subscribed to, you should subscribe immediately. We're sent, you know sending uh, a company a day to keep the FOMO away. FOMO away. And uh, yeah, anything else I missed, folks? Just want to give a shout out that we're partnering with this event with Startco out of Memphis. And yes. it has been awesome to work with them, and we um, it's going to be a great mix of our, of communities and brands, and it's countdown time, and we're getting super excited. So thanks to Start Co. as well for being a great partner. Yes, definitely. Thank you for adding that as well. And uh, we're excited. It's going to be a lot of fun down in Memphis and uh, a lot of great companies. I'm looking forward to it. And this, unfortunately concludes our episode 10 no not 10 11 
So that's it, folks. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Thanks for listening to the Startup of the Year podcast. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll be back with another episode soon. 